and then I'm going to show you the adjustments that I make to the to the book body block to make it more user friendly. Then we're going to zoom through a man's body block, which is just a woman's body block, but without boobs. Um, and then we're going to just kind of look at the basic modifications on what you can do with this initial shape, how to add fullness, how to take away fullness, um, how to deal with pleats and darts and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, and the other thing to think about is like, uh, start after this class, you'll start looking through books and, and history and fashion, and you'll start to see like, oh, that's what they did, that's so simple. Um, and I always tell people that they'll have a pattern making epiphany. Like in a month, you'll be laying in bed, and the patterning gods will, you know, leave a drop of dew on your forehead or whatever, and all of a sudden you can pattern anything. So that's just kind of keep that in mind that you'll have like a revelation at some point. Um, so we're going to get started with the measurements uh, that the book asks you for, for a woman. And then I'll go through the men's pages. Uh, and we just sent everybody the women's pages, but um, you'll get the book hopefully. Um, so let's, let's look at the measurements. Um, we're going to make ours today to a size 6 girl. Oh, the shop is such a mess. You're going to love our new shop. It's really fancy. Um, the dog play pen. The dogs have a play pen. There's just all kinds of stuff. There's a fort going on. Um, so if you've looked over the pages I sent you, on page 107, it just tells the measurements that we're going to take. And page 104 and 105 kind of describes the anatomy of where these measurements are. But I'm going to just go through our dress form uh, and measure her up. And you guys can type questions to Rachel as we go. Um, a lot of times if people have the same question, so she just kind of filters through them and, and asks them. And then there'll be moments where I say, now is a good time to ask a question. So um, I should have worn a girdle. Um, yeah, so uh, some of this will seem fast, but we're covering a lot. And, and we'll have the instructions to refer to. So I'm going to measure her chest. And uh, oftentimes when we're measuring performers, we'll tell them to take a big breath. So our dress form can't take a breath. So we're going to measure it just like it is. And I'm going to say it's 35. Um, and you don't have to work along at home, but uh, you can if you want to. Uh, on, a, on performers, we'll tell them to take a big breath. And some pattern makers will draft just to their expanded chest. And some people will draft to their resting chest. And I like to split the difference. So my resting chest is 42. And when I take a big breath, it's 44. So I might pattern if I was making something for myself to 43. But you don't have to worry about um, for the torso like flexing or non-flexing because it really doesn't change a whole lot. Um, so we're going to say our chest is 35. And then I'm going to measure around her waist. And it is going to be 26. And when I've got the person with me, I like to kind of jab my arm or my hand into their side and see where their body actually bends. A lot of patterning disasters come from people drafting uh, to where people wear their pants. And that's anymore, that's not anybody's waist. So um, you want to kind of find out where their body hinges. And that's a good place to say their natural waist is. Then we're going to measure her back, neck to waist. And it's just from like where her neck leaves her body. And we're going to say it's 15 and a half. Then we're going to measure the shoulder or the neck to shoulder. And that's just from the side of their neck to where their arm leaves the body. I'm going to use four and a half. Then, uh, since we're working on a woman, we're going to measure from the center of her shoulder to where her nipple is or her apex or point, depending on what you want to call it. And hers is 9 inches. Then we're going to measure the distance between her nipples, which is 7 inches. And then we need to know their front and back width. And there's a good description. Uh, and there's if you look at figure 4-7 on page 104, uh, it shows, if you're not sure where that is, you tie a string around their armpit and see where it rests on their shoulder. 
and that space in between your strings, their front width, where I like to tell people it's it's like when your arm is resting, it's where would your armhole be on your body? Like if I was going to draft a sleeve or an arm, for me it would be where does my arm leave my body? Now another mistake that people make is if they've got a t-shirt on with a regular armhole, people measure the armhole of their t-shirt. And a t-shirt is so loosely fitting that usually the armhole is not in the right spot. So you want to go with, with their actual anatomy. And her across front is going to be 12 inches. And her across back is going to be 12 and a half. And usually a man's across the back is bigger than a, a woman's because they've got a little more uh, muscle uh, in the back. So let's get started. And I think almost everyone but like uh, two of you got the recording, so uh, you'll be able to go back and look at this. And if anybody that didn't get the recording decides they want it, um, we can still give it to you for the adjusted price. So, did Mel come today? Uh, no, we're teaching a class. That's there. We, <laughs> we didn't get mail yet, but I have something that says it was delivered. So, okay. there's mail somewhere. Who knows? I don't know. I was Sorry. expecting some stuff in the office, but it's nothing. Nothing came. That's okay. Daryl. We're going to miss him. Okay, so here we go. We're back on track. This is live TV, folks. Okay, so. I'm going to just kind of read through sections of this as we get started, and then um, I'll tell everybody what step we're on, because uh, some of this will sound foreign, but it, the more you do, the more it'll, uh, it'll become second nature, and that's the goal. So we're going to start on page 108, because we figured out our measurements. Now we're going to do some calculations to figure out our bust dart and our waist dart. And they give you this great chart. So um, we're going to note what our bust dart is going to be. And we're going to use the chart. So our bust is 35. So 35 uh, inch bust gets a one inch bust dart. So you're going to make a note that your bust dart is an inch. Then we're going to uh, subtract our waist from our bust to figure out our waist dart. And it's nine inches is the difference. So our waist dart is also going to be an inch. Um, and if you go with the fashion industry, lots of times the bust dart is the same as the waist dart because they're trying to keep women in this like imaginary figure. But if your human bust dart and waist dart aren't the same, that's totally fine because we're all human. And it's different every time. Um, okay, so it just goes on to tell you how to subtract. Uh, and we are going to go ahead. Um, and look at this second column, uh, and it's going to have us do some math before we get started. So uh, the second column on page 108, uh, it wants us to figure out our bust dart, which we wrote down, our waist dart, which we wrote down. Then it just has us do some of the math now instead of doing it all as we go. So we're going to divide our bust in half. We're going to figure out what a quarter of the back neck to waist is, and you can round stuff to um, my 15 and a half comes out to 3.8 ish inches or 3 and 7 eighths is pretty close. Yep. What would be the dart size for a ballet dancer with almost no bust, 29 to 30 inch or smaller? Then you would just use 30, the 30 inch one or less than, but uh, everybody needs at least a half an inch. Even on kids, I put a half an inch. Um, unless they're like negative bust, then you can just say no dart at all. Um, okay, so then we need to know uh, half of our front width, a quarter of our waist, half of our bust point, and half of our back, which are all things that I trust you can sort out when you go through this on your own. Um, now, uh, this goes and it tells you the measurements that it's using for the steps in the book, but I'm going to just use my measurements for the dress form. Um, and we are going to go to step one. Here we go. This is going to be intense and fun. So the easiest thing to do, and if anybody did the booty short drafting with us, is to just find the points in each step and then find where they show up actually on your drawing. So we're going to make a box, uh, the first box to our body block. We're going to make a line uh, that's our back neck to waist 
plus the height of our bust dart. So I'm going to write that down. My back neck to waist is 15 and a half, and my bust dart is an inch. So my box is going to be 16 and a half inches tall. Then we're going to um, figure out the next line, which is one half of the bust plus a half of an inch. And what that does is it builds a little bit of ease in the body block so that you have something to take in a tiny bit if you need to. Uh, oftentimes for a ballet bodice, if I measured the person, I skip this little bit of ease because I want it to be really, really fitted. So that's your call. Um, so half of my bust is 17 and a half. And I'm going to add a half of an inch, so I'm going to make 18 inches. So we're going to make a box that's 16 and a half inches tall and 18 inches across. So I'm going to do that right now. 16 and a half by 18. And you don't want to go to either edge of your paper. It's always good to kind of float in your paper. I'm kind of running into my nose. So this vertical line is your back neck to waist plus whatever the bust dart is. And the reasoning behind that is, is once we take out the bust dart, we want our garment to end up the right height. So there we go. That's step one. Moving on to step two. We're going to just divide this rectangle in half vertically. So half of 18 is 9. That's an easy one. And I like to do this with a quilting ruler because it makes nice right angles. Then the next part of step two is it's going to have us uh, come down and make the armpit. So this line that's IJ will eventually be the armpit of the garment. And this next line up GH uh, is going to be your front and back width. So we're going to put in the front and back width and the armpit spots. And all it tells us to do is to divide our back neck to waist into four. So my back neck to waist into four is 3.8. And you can round uh, either direction. I'm going to say it's three and seven eighths. So now we're going to come down there. Come down there. Okay. So now we have the basic construction lines in here. Oh, am I good? I'm center. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to begin the front section in step three. So the first thing we're going to do is put in the neck. Uh, so we're going to put in the neck in step three. And you'll find that the wording of some of this is a little bit confusing, but if you just read the whole step, it makes sense. Um, step three says three inches to the left and a half inch up from C. We're going to make a mark. Uh, and you can mark all the letters in. Um, I'll mark some of them in. Uh, so we're going to do this first mark. We're going to go three inches over and a half inch up. Put a mark. And then we're going to go two and a half inches down from C and make another mark. So let's see. I'm going to see. This is K and M. And you're just going to put a right angle between those two spots. Or you can measure three inches down from K and put it down. Yes. Would you adjust K for a smaller child? Um, let me get through all of this, and then I will answer the last question. So, okay. Um, we're coming back to that. Rachel will help me remember, because I'm going to show you some more stuff. Uh, yeah, I got a pencil. Well, this one. You're welcome. I'm nice. Okay. So, we've got the groundwork in uh, to create a neck. And this pattern comes up with about a 14-inch neck. And we are going to talk a little bit more about that uh, before this is over. Um, do, 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 do. Now it wants us to put a curve from K to M. And you'll see that there's a curve in the book. So you're just going to figure out where this spot is. And the more you do this and the more clothes you make, the more these uh, different curves and shapes will start to be uh, recognizable like 
you'll soon start to tell if your curve is too straight or too curved what kind of neck it's going to make. And all of this is assuming that you're going to make a mock-up and put it on someone um, instead of just starting with this and going to town and then wondering why you might have to adjust something. So now we're going to build our front shoulder. So we've got our front neck and we're going to build our front shoulder in. And this is our first just because measurement. We're going to go down an inch and three eighths from our topmost line from the AC line and put a line, a faint line, an inch and three eighths. Then we're going to put the zero of our ruler at the top of the neck and we're going to bend the ruler until our shoulder measurement hits this line. So my shoulder's going to be four and a half. So I've got zero at K and I'm just going to bend this until I hit that line. So we've got our front neck and our front shoulder trucking along. All right, we're going to go on to step four, which is finishing the front armhole. Uh, and the first thing it has us do in step four is mark O. So this intersection right here in the very center, uh, that's going to eventually be your armpit. And then this line, which is the GH line, Here's where our front and back width are going to come into play. So our front width, we said, was 12 inches, and the instructions tell us to go half of that amount to the left of H. So I'm going to go 6 inches over, and that's going to be P. This is going to help me build my front armhole. Now, depending on the measurement you've got, P might be on either side of your shoulder. Um, uh, the system just puts it where it needs to go. So if your P is over here, it might just mean that you have a bustier person. Um, then we are going to connect N to P with a straight line and P to O with a curve. So we're just going to sail along. There's our straight line. And then if you're like me, you start collecting all sorts of different curves and then you start feeling like, oh, this is the curve I like to do this or that with. Um, this is a curve I like to put my arm The other thing, when you're doing more and more of this, is you'll start to feel like, oh, I think this, this armhole or this armhole is a little bit better. Um, and what I tell people to do is to draft the armhole that the book gives you. Then, if you feel that a different armhole is better, go ahead and mark what your gut tells you to do. So maybe if my gut told me to do this other line, then go back and split the difference. So all the time, uh, if you're unsure about something, do what the instructions say, put in what your gut tells you, and then go somewhere in the middle. And usually you'll be a little bit better off. All right. We are going to put a point Q down here on the front waist. Uh, and this is going to eventually help us build our side seam. So what it tells us to do is take one quarter of our waist measurement, which, let's see, half of our waist is 13, so one quarter, so half of 13 is six and a half. It tells us to take a quarter of the waist, plus, remember, we're going to have a waist dart, so we're going to close the waist dart up, so we need to add that in. So we're going to take a quarter of our waist, which is six and a half inches, and then we have to add the waist dart in that we're going to take away. So we're going to give and take. So that becomes seven and a half inches. And then the next just because measurement the book tells you is to go another quarter of an inch from the front to the back. And what that little quarter of an inch helps you do is it helps keep the side seam of your garment really straight. Because um, you don't want the seam to lean to the front at all. If anything, you want the seam to scooch a little to the back. So that's that extra quarter of an inch. And that's going to be spot Q. All right, I'm moving on to step six. Uh, here's where we're going to use our shoulder to bust point measurement and our point to point measurement. So to the left of this um, vertical line or to the left of D, which is your bottom right part of the, the box, it tells you to go over half of your point to point. And my point to point is seven. So I'm going to go over three and a half inches and make a faint line or a sharpie line so that it shows up. 
So this line that we just made to the left of V, this is half of our point to point or our nipple to nipple measurement. Then the next thing it tells us to do is go to the shoulder and find the center of your shoulder and that's going to be R. Then we're going to use our shoulder to bust point measurement to figure out where her nipple actually is. So our shoulder to bust point on my dress form for today is 9 inches. So we're going to go ahead and mark that in. And this spot, S, is we are going to say is her nipple. So we're using the measurements that we took and just figuring out where on a flat piece of paper all those different measurements are. And the more, the more you play with this, the more you'll start to, to think about it as it relates to pants or a sleeve or a costume for your dog, which we have some that we need to finish. Um, those are our summer goals. <laughs> Okay, so we did step six. Um, we marked half of our bust point vertically, and we put our small end of our ruler at the center of the shoulder, center of the shoulder, and angled our ruler down until it hit that line to figure out where the nipple is. Now we're going to create our bust dart. Um, and the first section, uh, the first thing it has us do to create the bust dart is to draw a faint line it's parallel to the bottom of the block or parallel to this armpit line. We're going to draw a faint line across where her nipple is. Or a nice sharp line. So this line that we just drew is going to help us figure out where our bust dart is. Um, now it has to scoot over a half of an inch and make another mark. So that's going to be T. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is measure down from the armpit um, the total bust dart. So the wording here gets kind of goofy because it says measure down the total computed depth of the bust dart. It's just the bust dart measurement that we came back uh, that we came up with when we first started. This will be the most out of all the patterning. This bust dart is the most confusing thing that you'll have on your plate. So once you're comfortable with this, you're ready to, uh, ready to rock and roll. And that is you. So we found where our nipple was, then we made a, a line straight across from the nipple to the side seam. We marked T a half an inch to the left of the nipple, and then we marked U the entire bust dart dip the entire bus start down from this line. Now the next step, we're going to complete the top and bottom of the bus start. So this line, these two points from T to U, this is actually going to be the center of the bus start because we want the bus start to angle down at the side. And you'll find the larger the bust is, the more angle you have in the bus start. And what's great about that is the more angle you have cut across your bust dart, the more bias you have at the side. So a larger bust dart will have more bias in the side seam and give more flex over a larger breast. So it's kind of cool how this stuff works out. Now, on either side of you, we are going to center our bust dart measurement. So our bust dart is an inch. So we're going to go a half an inch on either side of you. And that is going to make our top and bottom uh, dart, the top and bottom of our dart. I hope everybody is rolling their eyes at home. Has anybody left? Anybody walked out? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. This is some good stuff. Okay, so I'm measuring. So on either side of you, we split the bus dart, and I'm going to measure the top of it. Uh, it's going to be five inches. So this is the top of my bus dart. So this line that's straight across from T, we don't need anymore, which is why they told you to make it faint. So the top of my bust dart is five inches. Now, if I just drew from T to the bottom of my bust dart, it's going to be too long. This is five and a quarter. And on a larger bust, the bottom would, would really be off. So it wants you to measure the top, which is five inches, and then angle it to the bottom so that when you sew your bust dart together, it indeed uh, everything matches up nice and tidy. Then you can draw a tiny little angle from the bottom of your bust dart up to you. 
So this should this should start to look familiar to people who've sewn any vintage patterns. So you have the center of a buster and then the top and the bottom of the buster. Um, we are going to now put the side seam in. So Q is where we figured out a quarter of our waist is. We took a quarter of our waist plus this dart that we're going to eventually have here, which was an inch plus another quarter of an inch. And then uh, it tells you to connect Q up to the bottom of the dart. There's the mail that everybody was talking Thank about you. earlier. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, so now we're going to connect um, from Q up to the bottom of the bus dart. I guess the sign we put on the front door that says we're shooting a video doesn't mean anything to anybody but us. <laughs> um, okay, we're getting there. We're going to finish the front, and then we're going to review any part of the front that anybody's totally lost on. Um, okay, now we're going to do the front waist dart. On this, this line that was half of our point to point, oh, let's show everybody this. The samples are in. There is a new company. If you go to hoopwire.com, there is somebody manufacturing the plastic coated steel skirt hooping that we all miss and love for making tutus and petticoats uh, and we just got our sample and I think we're ready to buy 500 feet of it. So how cool is that? Fresh off the mail wagon. Back to business. Step nine. Uh, on the center line uh, or your nipple line, the vertical line through your nipple, nip, nipple, nipple you're going to split your dart. So your waist dart that we came up with earlier is an inch. So I'm going to put a half an inch on either side of that line. And it also tells you to mark a spot uh, an inch down from the nipple. So I'm going to go an inch down from the nipple. And that is W. All right, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Do, 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 do. So I hope you're reading some of this along, too, because uh, it's good to see it and read it at the same time. Now we're going to connect either side of that nipple up to W. And we are going to have the hardest thing you will ever pattern sorted out. So we'll take a couple minutes to ask questions about the front section or if you need me to redo a spot. If there's something that you can't sort out from the instructions and you would like me to go over, now is the time while we take a break from our sponsor, Starbucks. You can also address. Yes, let's talk about that right now. Adjusting K for a different neck. Let me get um, a proportion wheel. And uh, let's talk about let's talk about making stuff for kids and stuff for adults. Pretty much, this system works for everybody from teeny weeny to huge. And if you, I would say start with the size of somebody that's kind of average, get comfortable with that before you branch into kids and grown-ups. Now, I know from doing this a thousand times that if I have a three-inch box here. I wind up with a 14 inch neck. So if you've heard me talking about the proportion wheel ever, you'll know that we use it all the time. What it is, it's a, a thing that gives you percents and ratios. Um, and the inside wheel, there's two wheels here with numbers, the inside wheel is labeled your original. So if you want to get into this kind of stuff, um, I'm going to say that I, that I know I have something to relate here, that 3 inches makes about a 14 inch neck. So I'm going to turn 3 inches until I get a 14 inch neck, okay? So what I'm going to do, let's say I need a 13 inch neck, I'm going to do 2 and 3 quarters of an inch. My box is only going to be 2 and 3 quarters of an inch over and 2 and 3 quarters of an inch down. Let's say I need a larger neck. Let's say I need an 18 inch neck. If I look at my wheel now, uh, 18 is 3 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to make a bigger box to accommodate a bigger neck. But then, like I said earlier, you also start to kind of recognize this neck, what the shape is. So now, if I was going, this system kind of bases stuff off on the back neck to waist measurement, as a lot of patterning for tops does. 
I would say that right out of the book's instructions, that from a 13 or a 12 inch back neck to waist all the way up to a 7 inch back neck to waist, point K is always going to be about a half an inch up. Um, this line to make your shoulder is going to always be about an inch and three eighths down. Now, if I'm going below a 12 inch back neck to waist for a smaller and smaller person, you might <coughs> say that K is three eighths of an inch up or a quarter of an inch up. For a smaller person, you might raise this line so that you have less of a shoulder. Um, and that's one of those things to, to to mess with and just see what works. And also when you get the book, um, there's a little more info on that. And after you play with this, I would buy some other flat patterning methods uh, and read through it until it starts to become uh, second nature. So you got to make a lot of patterns. Um, and then you can make any pattern you want. Did that kind of answer the question about the neck? Like figure out what the what kind of like what a ratio is or a, the proportion of it yes yes um please review chart one depth of bust start do you add yes this one me, so do you easy. add a half inch to the three-fourths inch for a fuller bust review chart one yes so chart one we're making a 36 inch bust so it just says that our bust art is an inch. But if it's a fuller bust, are you adding a half no. inch? No. Uh-uh. Uh, you're just doing exactly what the book says. So so as long if your bust is between 30 and 44 inches, you're good to go from the book. If your bust is more than 44 inches, you could use the proportion scale or kind of guesstimate. Um, and if your bust is 30 inches or less, I would still make like a 3 8 inch or a half inch bust start. I measured a friend to practice this, and when I calculated S, it's really far down. Is this that means she's range? got lower nipples. So what's cool with patterning is, as a pattern maker, if I'm making a bodice for a friend and I want to push her tits up, if I push S up higher, her boob will have to fit higher. Does that answer that one? All of these points will be in completely different spots depending on your measurements in the human. Yes? If you're making a pattern for a guy, I assume you do the bus start. You know what? We're going to do that next. So that's great. Um, is it more accurate to draft a pattern using this method or use a proportion wheel to enlarge or shrink a pattern you know worked? I would start with this and make it in your different sizes, fit it to a person, and then go from there. Okay, we're moving on to the back. Good questions. Okay, so let's figure out. Let's see. Let's see. We are going to go to step 10 on page 112, and the back is much easier than the front. Um, so the first thing we are going to do is figure out the back neck. And she tells you to go over two and a half inches and a half an inch up. So I'm going to go over two and a half inches and a half an inch up. And then to connect that with a curve, my, I'm getting a little shoulder. You can still see it. Yeah. So now I'm going to put my back neck in. And again, like I said earlier, this is to get you going with patterning. You've got to do, uh, you have to play with this a lot. Uh, any system of patterning before um, before uh, it it starts to feel comfortable. Then tell people you're a pattern maker. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So now we've gone over two and a half inches and a half an inch up, and that's spot A A. And now uh, we're going to put the curve in. So now we're going to work on the back shoulder. And it's kind of the back shoulder and the back armhole at the same time. So on the line where our front width was, we're going to do the same thing from the right to the left with half of our back width. So our back width was 12 and a half. So I'm going to come over six and a quarter and make a mark. And then the next just because measurement tells me to go up three inches and make another mark. And that's helping us figure out the back shoulder. Now, if I was doing this for someone with a back neck to waist less than 12, 
I'd probably go up two and a half inches or two inches. Uh, but again, the more you do this, the more it will feel comfortable. Now our shoulder doesn't go to this mark, which in the book is BB, A and BB. This mark gives us the angle of our shoulder. So in the front, we had a just because measurement that was an inch and three eighths down. In the back, this point is helping us figure out the slope of our shoulder. And because we're making a, a nicely fit thing, the book tells us to add a half an inch of ease to our back shoulder. So our front shoulder is four inches, and our back shoulder is four and a half inches, and that gives you movement for the back of the arm. Then, to complete the back of the armhole, we are now going to connect this outside part of our shoulder to our half of our back width. And then we're going to take a curved ruler and get that to fit into the armpit. And just like we said with the front, this is one of those spots where the more you do this, you'll start to say, oh, I think maybe I didn't measure them that great. And you can make a little bit of adjustment here and there. And always trust your gut. Like if you're like, oh, I think I should move this a little bit, you're probably right. Like I just kind of made a nicer curve uh, for my arm. Okay. Now, we're going to put in the side seam for the back. When we made our front side seam, we took a quarter of our waist, plus we added this dart. So anything that we add, we got to take away. So we're going to add a dart into the back. Uh, and on the front, we used a quarter of the waist, plus our dart, and we scooted our seam a quarter inch from the front to the back. So we, this quarter inch that we scooted towards the back of our garment, we're going to take away on the back side. So we added a quarter in the front, we're going to take away a quarter in the back. So I'm going to go six and a half over from the back, which is a quarter of my waist, plus my dart, which is an inch, minus a quarter. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a train going up and down the track. And that is going to be point E. -E. Then the next thing it tells us to do is make a, a vertical line up from EE. So now we're figuring out the back side seam. And if you remember earlier, we added the bus dart to the front because we're going to close this up. And what this dart does is it's giving more length over the front to get from her shoulder down to her waist. Now in the back, we don't have a bus dart. So we're going to have to figure out how to take away this bus dart from the back. And in a minute, when we do this again, I'm going to show you the change I make to this step. And you'll see, you'll see uh, why this change is good, um, but, but both work. Um, so what she tells you to do now is to measure from V to Q. So she tells you to measure the bottom of your dart. So I'm measuring. Nothing in the dart, because that's going to go away. I'm measuring the bottom of my dart to my front side is five and three quarters. Then she tells you to put your ruler at the top of the dart. So we're pretending the dart is closed. I'm running into the camera. We're good. I didn't mess anything up yet. No. So now I'm going to go down five and three quarters from the top of my dart until I hit that line that we just drew. And that's going to be FF. And then you make a line parallel from FF over to your center back. So this side of our pattern is our center back of our back. Now, the thing that I'm going to show you in a little bit is what happens with this is your back waist is now here and your front waist is down here. So uh, now if we measure our center back neck to waist, so this is our waist right here, it's 15 inches. So you'll see why she has you raise the waist up. It's to accommodate what we added to the front dart and took away. It's math. Geometry. Math. It's not science. Magic. It's rock. It's magic. Rachel's got this. Um, okay, now we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. Now um, we're going to connect point F, F up to O. Actually, I did that out of order of the book. She has you do that first. Yeah, yeah, talk to home. And then do this next line. Now we're going to put in the back waist dart. So your front waist dart and your back waist dart are exactly the same. So our front waist dart was an inch 
and our back waistguard is going to be an inch. Um, now what she has you do is measure out um, to the left of FF. We're going to mark half of our waist. So that's about seven inches. So I'm going to go three and a half inches over from the left of F. Then the back waist dart is prettier if it's just a little bit further towards the back. So she has you go another three quarters of an inch. So this will become our back uh, dart. It's going to go up to the armpit. And then that same dart. My coffee just kicked in yeah, my tea drink. Now we're going to go a half an inch on either side of this and mark this up. Although it's giving me the hiccups. I can't hear you. Are you? Just a little bit, a little doggy hiccups. <laughs> is everybody overwhelmed yet? No, this stuff's awesome. So what we have now is a shell with uh, two waist darts and two bust darts. So you'll have two darts in the back, two darts in the front because we're assuming that this is on the fold and that she has a right and left side. Um, so let's uh, put this sewn up on the dress one and just kind of look at it before we move on to doing the adjustment that I do to this. And I don't know what time. We're doing really good with time. We started at 3.30? We started at 3.30? Oh, good. We're, we're on track. Um, so what this gives you is a fitted shell that is has the possibilities to be anything. A bodice, an evening gown, a 40s dress, a Victorian dress. And when you're fitting this on your person, um, you can always, like this has got about an inch and a half seam allowance. When you start to fit this stuff, you'll, you'll now start marking in any adjustments you want to make to the shell. So if you've got your person actually there, I can see that I wish my neck was a little bit lower. But again, this is a dress form, not a human. So you'll put the shell on, and you always want to actually match your center back up. Uh, lots of folks have the instinct to just take in the back until it fits. You want your center back to actually be a straight line. Pin your center back straight, and if you want this super duper fitted, then come back in and take in the dart a little bit. Because the more off grain the back of a, a fitted outfit gets, the more weird wrinkles and stuff you get. So maybe I'll put it on inside out. Might be easier to see. So if we put it on inside out, and we stitch this, we stitch this. Rachel stitched this in black thread so it would show up a little easier. So we've got our two bust darts and our two waist darts. And then if I was making a blouse for this dress form, I would come in and you can see here's where my original neckline was. Now that I've got it on a person, I can come back in and say, actually, I think her neck needs to go a little bit down. And you could mess with the armhole, you could mess with the darts, but the more accurately fit you have this shell or this block, the more um, correct all your patterns you're going to fit. So once I've got this done for the person I'm making clothes for or myself, once this fits right, anything I do after this should fit correct. So like if I make this little adjustment to the neck, I'll come back to my block and I'll just repeat on my block the same thing I did. And you should assume that you're going to have adjustments. That's why there's fittings and why we make samples and mock-ups and stuff. So there you go. So now uh, we'll take, there looks like there's two questions there. Then I'm going to show you the change I make to this. So I'm going to redo this exact same thing really quick, but I'm going to explain an adjustment to it. Okay? So I'm going to actually flip it over. Oh, I can't flip it over. So I'm not going through. While Rachel reads me some questions, I'm going to cut myself another piece of paper. Okay, for a full busted woman, is the back dart really the same as the front waist dart? It sure is, because you're getting your full bustedness from your bust dart, not your waist dart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a good answer. <laughs> Do you recommend adding more ease?
point DB for a damp garment with sleeves, and how do you know what your seam allowance would be? Seam allowance, you just add whatever seam allowance you want. So if you've ever used one of our patterns or ever worked in a costume shop, um, there's no seam allowance on anything. Uh, you just you have to add the seam allowance later. Does that make sense? And then ease goes right. So you're going to get the book and read about ease. If I wanted uh, for a dance garment, you don't want ease because you you basically fit everything until it's like a glove. But if I was going to say make the shell that we just looked at, if I was going to make a coat that was going to go over a sweater, I would say my bust is 36, but I'm going to make a shell that's bigger because I've got a three inch thick sweater under there. So I would make my bust maybe 39 and my waist also a couple inches bigger to accommodate the clothes underneath. Is positive ease needed? Is, it, is this fitted block going to give enough movement? If you're making a fitted thing, make it fitted. If you need ease, you could start with a fitted thing then figure out in the fitting how much ease you need. All right, now we are going to move on to doing. Um, There's another. The your form yeah. needs a full bust adjustment? Question mark. Your form needs a full. I don't know what that means. Clarify that. Yes. <laughs> So the other thing is that this gives you the circumference around the bust and fit on the side of the bust and under the bust. If you have a really interesting shaped bust, um, you would make the shell, then mold the darts underneath it because you might end up you might end up with a dart uh, that looks like this instead of a dart that's absolutely straight. And that's something that comes with practice and time. All right, so here I'm going to blast through this because we want to get to some other stuff. Um, here's the adjustment I make to a, a woman's costume, um, and I'm going to show you how to add a hip into it. So before we have one block that we uh, divided in half, what I'm going to do now is draft space in between so that we can add a hip into it. And the other thing that we're going to change is before we had a block where the waists didn't line up. I'm going to show you how I line up the waist. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use my same measurements. And half of my bust uh, was 17 and a half. And we're going to add a half an inch of ease. So instead of making my first block 18 inches across, I'm going to make it uh, I'm, gonna my paper I'm gonna make my block nine inches for the front and nine inches for the back, but I'm gonna leave a gap in it. So instead of making a giant rectangle, I am making a rectangle that's the exact same, but I'm leaving some space in between. I'm shy. I'm shy. I'm starting again on this side. Sorry, folks. This is live TV. So instead of making a solid block like we did at the beginning, I'm going to leave a gap. So instead of making an 18 inch long rectangle, I'm going to make two 9 inch rectangles. And I'm going to leave an inch and a half in the middle just because that's how much paper I've got. But you may choose to leave more or less. Now, earlier we ended up with the back waist, not at the waist, because we added the bust dart into the back, the height of the bust dart. So what I'm going to do this time around is I'm going to add my bust dart to my front. So my back neck to waist is 15 and a half plus my inch bust dart. So I'm going to make a separate start for my front and back. So I'm going to go up 16 and a half inches. So my front block has the bust dart added into it. And now my back block is going to only be the back neck to waist. So what, we've, what we're going to end up with now is that the waist is lined up. How cool is that? So this will make it easier to add a hip in. 
and also it'll make your pattern development, modifying your pattern for a man or a woman. It'll make it much easier. So now I'm going to just work, some of this is just an exact repeat of what we just did. I'm going to work my way across this and put in all my points. So I'm going to put in the block to make my neck. I'm going to put in the line to make my shoulder. I'm going to divide uh, my front width and my armpit lines out. And so now instead of going straight across, because our front and back are different heights, you're going to divide your back neck to waist into four, and you're going to come down from the top line. And once you do this through the, through the book first, and then think about this, that we're lining up the waist and uh, making, making our blocks what they need to be, our front with the bust dart and our back without the bust dart, uh, it'll be a little bit easier. So now I'm going to put in my shoulder for my hair. Put the zero of my ruler at point A. I'm going to put in my front neck. I'm going to put in my nipple line, which is half my point to point. I'm going to come down my shoulder from the center of my shoulder down nine inches or wherever that measurement is. And there's my nipple. Normally you say crotch a lot. Yeah. So it's nipple. nipple, 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 nipple. Um, my front width is 12, so half of that is 6. I'm going to put in my armhole like that. I'm going to put in my dart, so I'm making a line straight across from my nipple. See, all this should look familiar now. I'm going to come down my full dart. I'm going to split my bust dart on either side of that and go over a half, down an inch. I'm going to measure the top of my dart. This time it's five. I'm doing this with a sharpie. Then the bottom is going to be five. So I'm going to put my uh, waist in six and a half plus my inch dart seven and a half plus a quarter seven and three quarters. Put in my side seam. I'm going to put in my front dart. I'm going to put in my back neck two and a half inches over. Just like slight curving there. I'm going to come over half of my back width and make a mark. I'm going to go up three inches, make another mark, put my back shoulder, which is my front shoulder, plus a half of an inch of ease. You can turn that into a dart if you want. You can take that half inch away and add another dart. Up to you. I am going to put in my back arm hole. I am going to put in my back waist, so a quarter of my waist, six and a half plus my waist start an inch, but then I'm going to take away a quarter. Now, haha, -ha, look at this. You don't have to do those weird steps measuring below the dart to put your back waist in. Then I am going to find the center of my back waist, go three quarters of an inch to the left of that. That's going to be the center for my back dart. Now, depending on your style, you can move this back dart anywhere you want to. Um, it's just you need to take away from the back. And I definitely encourage everybody to get a hold of this book and some other flat patterning books because the more you look at pieces, the more familiar they will become. Um, okay, so now, so what? let's review what we did. Instead of drafting the front and back the same height, I made my front rectangle the height of my back neck to waist plus my bust dart. My back rectangle, I made only the height of my back neck to waist. So what we've got now is the waist is lined up. And the other difference that we did here, instead of having my front and back smashed into each other here at the armpit, we put a gap in there. And you can put whatever gap you want, because I'm going to show you now how you can turn this into a high hip. Okay? Okay. So, similarly to the measurements and the principle that we just did, we're going to add a high hip into here now. You could use the same thing to add a full hip. So, 
what do I need to know to add a high hip to this? I need to know the circumference of my high hip, which I said earlier was 32 inches. Well, I didn't say it earlier. I measured the dress one right now. So my high hip is going to be 32 inches. And my high hip, from my waist to my high hip, I measured on the dress form, um, was three and a half inches down. So if I know that the circumference of 32 happens three and a half inches down on the body, logically, I'm going to put a line three and a half inches down from my waist and connect my front and back. Now, the, the putting the waist in and putting the high hip in are the same kind of thing. We've got to remember that there's a dart here which doesn't count in our high hip measurement and that we want the high hip in the front to be a smidge towards the back just like we did when we came up with the waist. So first I'm going to show you how to complete the darts into a high hip. So my back dart, I want the butt to be fuller. Uh, and if you look at purchase patterns or start to look at other garments, you'll see that if something has a dart in the back, it usually only goes to the high hip, like in your pants. Your dart doesn't go all the way down to your full hip. So I'm going to make my back dart go all the way down to my high hip. So I'm going to just finish my back dart like so. And also the more you look at other patterns and play with this, you'll see that if a garment has a fisheye dart or a French dart in the front, a dart that, that has two zeros and fullness taken out, it's usually longer than a dart in the back. So I just measure the height of my front dart is six inches. And that's how far down I'm going to take my front dart. So I'm making a dot. So I found the center of my dart, and I went straight down the same amount, so I'm mirroring my dart. And now that gives me the amount for my high hip. Aha! Like that. And I'm only drawing the dart into my high hip, because that's all I'm concerned with. So now we've actually got to put our high hip in. So. My high hip was 32, half of that is 16, half of 16 is 8. So 8 inches uh, is a quarter of my high hip. Now, if I just measure 8 inches over from my front, it's not going to fit right because we have to account for the dart, uh, which isn't going to be there. So I'm going to just measure from my front over is about 3 and an 8. Then I'm going to just move three and an eighth across the dart, so we're pretending we've closed the dart. And I'm going to go over eight inches, and just like we did on the waist, we added a quarter, I'm going to add another quarter here, Then we can complete our side seam. So our high hip was three and a half, so now I'm going to just mark three and a half onto my pattern, and you'll see that I'm putting a little bit of a right angle in there so that you don't get a weird uh, bump at the side. And when you read your steps in the book, she talks uh, a few spots about putting a few other right angles in. So like you put a right angle at the neck and a few other spots so that when you sew things together they line up really nice. Now my back, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over eight inches plus what we're losing in the dart and we're going to take away a quarter. But you'll see we put our dart right down to the high hip line. So we're not losing anything. So I'm going to go over eight inches, go back a quarter, and that will be my back. So the same principles of how high up on the body is the circumference and where does the circumference happen, uh, it's, it's, it's the same principle to do this as the one that we had just done. So if I have the low hip, and I know how far down my low hip is, I would draw from my waist, mark a line down to my low hip, and then figure out from my high hip where do I have to come out to accommodate my low hip. So you can just continue uh, and explore that. Okay, so we're going to do a man's one. Uh, do we have any questions over there? The question was clarified about the shell on the form. Does it need a full bust adjustment? due to that extra fabric around the arm. Oh, like this? I think it's so. just because there's not, yeah. If you're talking about this, 
there's no human in it, so there's no shoulder, there's no shoulder actually holding this up. But again, you just mold anything you can fit to the body is gonna fit however you pin it. I think that I think that answers. Okay, let's do a man uh, next. Let me get another piece of paper. Is this piece of paper stuck to that piece of paper? Here, there's my neck. I need a haircut. Um, so I'm going to just pull some measurements out of the air and go through doing a man, which is like doing a woman's, but even easier. And then I'll kind of show you, like, oh, if I want to turn this, uh, we're going to turn the woman's thing into something and the man's thing into something. Um, I'm going to say that my man has a 36-inch chest. He has a... Uh, 20, I'm picking things that I can divide, a 28 inch waist, a 16 inch back neck to waist. He's going to have a 5 inch shoulder, um, and his front width is going to be 13, his back width is going to be 14. So, I don't need any of those charts to figure out a bust dart because he doesn't have a bust dart. Um, but I can figure out the waist dart, so I'm going to subtract my chest from my waist, and it's what, 36 times 10, it's 8 inches different. So in my book, I'm going to look and figure out my waist dart for my guy. Um, my difference is 8 inches, so he's going to have a 1 inch waist dart. For those of you asking, there are directions for drafting a man in this book. In the book. Get the book. We're just not giving everybody every page because it wouldn't be <laughs> legal and just to just Xerox everything because uh, you know, just like if you took a class at a college, you've got to buy a book. Um, and Australia, we can help you figure out how to get a few copies for someone to disperse. But you don't even need the men's instructions. You just don't do anything that talks about a bus dart. It's exactly the same. Um, okay, so I'm going to put in my back neck to waist is 14. No, yeah, oh, he's short. You know what, my back neck to waist is 16. This is a B. Then um, I'm going to, I'm not going to put ease into my chest this time. I'm going to make it fitted, but if I wanted a little ease, I might make my chest 38 instead of 36. So, a quarter of 36 is 9. Is a quarter of 36 9? 9. 9 and 9 is 18. 18. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm going to do the same thing like we just did on the girls, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap just so you can see that again. So in the book, you're connected at the side seam, but I am not. I'm leaving a gap in my side seam because I want you to have more information than the book has. And for those of you staying on for sleeves, pants, and other stuff, um, the more the more you see this stuff, oh, I don't really have enough paper there. The more it will feel like second nature. I had to angle my bed to come, but just for real estate reasons. So same thing on a guy. So your guy's neck might be bigger. Um, so you're going to measure the neck once you've finished it, and then adjust it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just start putting in my shoulder and stuff in my neck. And then I'll show you a little bit of uh, some easy ways you can adjust this neck too. I said my shoulder is five inches. So what's nice on a man's, since you're not dealing with the bus dart, your armpit line and your front and back width line are straight across because your front and back blocks are the same height. So if my back neck to waist is 16, I'm going to divide that by 4, go across my back, across my front, then I'm going to do it again, and then it gives us our armpit, so right here is going to be our armpit. My front width was 13, so just like we did on a girl, we're going to divide 13 in half, I'm going to go 6 and a half over, and we are going to put in our armpit. Uh, I'm going to do my back right now. My back width, oh no, yeah, my back next to is 16. My back width is 14. Patterning with Benny Hill, right? Anybody knows who that is? 
you should. So I'm going to go half of my back width and adjust the cut measurement. And actually, this shoulder slope, uh, this little three inches, it seems to work pretty much on kids and adults because when you have a shorter body block, right, and you still go up three inches, it makes less of a shoulder. So a kid will naturally have less of an angle in the shoulder by still going up three inches. Somebody was lurking at the window. Then a grown man, you'll have more space in between here, and your three inches up will actually fall lower, and you get more of an angle for a more beefy or a larger man's shoulder. So it's it's cool how this stuff, this this system works out really well. My back shoulder is going to be a half an inch bigger than my front. I'm going to put in my back arm hole. Let's see. My waist, I said, was going to be 28 inches, so I'm going to divide that in four, just like on the girl. And that's 14, half of 20 is 14, half of that is 7. And we're going to have an inch dart similar to the girl, so I'm going to go over 7 inches plus my inch dart, plus a quarter of an inch. And there is my side seam, my front side. Now the back, we're going to do the same thing, only we're going to go a quarter the other way. So I'm going to go over 7, plus my inch dart, minus quarter. Because we want the seam to lilt a little bit towards the back. Then we can put in our darts. And on the man, um, I just put the front dart kind of right in the center. So I'm going to find the center. I'm going to go a half inch on each side. I'm going to go up to this point. Then we're going to scoot our back dart a little bit to the left. So I'm going to find my center. I'm going to go three quarters of an inch to the left. Mark my dart on either side of that. Now this is about three weeks of college. So Consider yourselves educated. Educated, educated. So the man's is the same as the woman's, except he doesn't have a nipple. So any any measurement talking about a bus dart, you just skip, and then you've got a man's. So let me develop this man's one a little bit, and then we're going to show you lots of development on girls' stuff. So now is a good time to ask questions about what we've done. For the women's, you went up to the nipple for the dart. Uh, you Actually, the I arm, didn't. You stop at the armpit for the man. Is that okay? You stop at the armpit for the man at this line. And the woman's, I stopped the dart an inch below the nipple. So the man's is going to go up to the armpit because usually guys don't have a whole lot more goods uh, in there. Um, and the woman stops, the back stops at the armpit line. The man's, I'm going to stop the front and back at the armpit line. So let's say that we're going to mess with the man's a little bit. Um, so we've got our guy here, right? And I'm going to just pretend that I put his high hip in. So I'm going to just slap on a high hip for playing. So right now we're going to play around here. So I'm putting a high hip in. I'm going to do the same thing on the guy. My back dart is going to stop at my high hip. Are good? Mm -hmm. I'm putting in my high hip. My front dart, I'm going to imagine, is the same length below the waist as it is above the waist. It's confusing because I'm watching in a monitor that's in the works. Yeah. In the book, the waist dart is below the armpit line. Is this an adjustment you do for the male block? The waist dart is below the armpit line. Let me The waist dart on the woman is below the armpit because we don't want the dart to go up past her nipple. They're asking about the male. The man's can go up to the armpit line. But if you want more fullness in the chest, if you want to give the man more room in the chest, 
resolve the dart lower. So if I end my man's dart right here, it's going to be a little poofy over his nipple. Yeah, I think that answers it. So think about fullness. You're adding and subtracting fullness. So if you lower a dart, it leaves more room uh, in that part of the chest. So if you want a whole bunch of room in the chest, make your dart lower, but then put it on somebody and see what it looks like. Yeah. Okay, so I'm putting in, I'm going to measure the height of this dirt, and we're going to make a very basic man's vest. I'm going to put dot on my table. So I just want to figure out. And then I'm going to just make up a high hip. I'm not even going to measure anything. And remember, I want a little right angle right there. Okay. So, now, if I want to turn this into a man's vest, I know some things about a man's vest from having made man's vests. Um, I know the neck, depending on the style, might not go all the way up to the neck. And this is a very fitted armhole. Uh, oftentimes, vests, the armhole is a little bit lower and the shoulder is a smidge narrower so that the shoulder seam of the shirt is a little towards the edge and the vest is a little bit in. So I'm going to just kind of monkey with some, uh, some adjustments first. So now from here out, I'm doing stuff as a designer. I'm designing my vest pattern. I'm laying style lines uh, and, and using uh, common sense. So, there's, so what I'm doing now is just I'm a designer designing my pattern. I know this fits my dude, my imaginary dude, but I don't want the armpit to come up all the way into his armpit, so I'm going to drop my armhole a quarter of an inch, and I'm or half an inch, and I'm going to make my armhole a smidge bigger. So I'm going to just use my same ruler, and I'm putting in a bigger armhole. So on my man's vest, we're getting rid of the original armhole. So this would be just like if you're making a tunic and are going to make a, a sleeve unit and add sleeves to it. Just decide what the style lines of your tunic are. So I've got a new armhole, and I want my neck to be much lower. I'm going to have the neck, neck go down to his chest. So I'm going to mark in my new neck. And we're going to get rid of that. And I know that my neck, or that my center front needs a little bit of an over and under lap. So just use kind of what you know from things you've made. So I'm going to add a half an inch of over and under lap. So here's my center front, and then now, now I have my lap. This section here is my lap. Um, I'm going to make the hem of my vest have a nice point in it. So I'm going to mark where I want the bottom of my center front to be. Then here's where here's where folding and dart starts to play. If I want my, my vest to come down here and go back up, the easiest way to do that is to just close the dart because the dart's going to be sewn. So I'm, I'm going to just fold my paper and close my little dart there. And I like curves, so I'm going to just lay my curved ruler there. And I'm going to make the point of my vest. And I want my vest to kind of join the back nicely. So I'm going to flip my curve. But now I'm a designer. I'm just deciding what shape I want my garment to be. Um, and if I don't want to have a dart here, I could make a center front and a side front. Having a dart in a man's vest is totally perfect. But I'm going to turn this into a side front and a center front. So soon I will cut what we don't need away from here, and it will start to make more sense. So I've got a front and a side front, and I don't know if you caught it, but I put my notch in right now. Working for years as a pattern maker, oftentimes people would come over and say, I don't think this notch lines up, but if you put your notch in when it's fused to the paper, you can tell them, I'm pretty sure it does. Look up there. I'm so mean, aren't I? There's a lot of light bulbs. There's a lot of light bulbs. This is how patterning works. You just, so we have something 
And, and I'm going to say that I fit this to my jute. I'm going to say I already tried my shell on. I made it in muslin and fixed it up. When I used to work in summer theater in the Black Hills of South Dakota, we would put on giant musicals like Music Man, Annie Get Your Gun, all sorts of shows. And before I even got to the costume, and we would do giant shows built from scratch in two weeks. Before I even got to the theater, we had a, shell, a muslin shell of every actor. And on day one, they all tried on a, a torso shell with a sleeve and a pair of pants. We made the notes to it. Then we could just bang out costume after costume because we already knew that it was going to fit. So I've got my dart, which we don't need, so we're just going to cut off the dart. And now we've got the beginnings of our vest. We have our front and our side front of our vest. Now we're going to deal with the back. So one nice thing about having cut the front and the side front off is now I can lay my waist together and I can see that the curve in my, so my side front has this nice curve here. Yeah, it's easier to see like that. This curve, I want this to relate to the back of my vest. So I'm going to lay my side front to there like it's sewn. So we're sewing the paper with our brains, right? So I'm going to imagine this is sewn, and I'm going to put a curve on there. And first I'm going to just kind of eyeball in a curve that relates to my side seam. Now just like we did in the front, I am going to fold this dark kilo. Oh, this is so much fun. I love this. It's fun, it's right? The it's the capping. It's the capping. <laughs> so now I this dart's going to be sewn closed, right? So now I closed it in the paper, and whatever curve I put on there now, when it's done, it's going to fit perfect. The other thing I've got now is I've got my front shoulder, and I'm going to lay that up there, and pretty quickly I'm going to realize that we added this half an inch of ease to the back. See my front shoulder? doesn't match up. My back is bigger. I can do two things now because I'm the designer of my pattern. I can either take another quarter off of each side or if I want to make it a Vogue pattern instead of a not Vogue pattern. I better not say any of the other companies in trouble. I'm going to just take my, my, I know that I have an extra half inch in the back shoulder, right? And I'm going to just decide what looks good, and I'm going to put a teeny weeny little dart in my back shoulder. You'll see a lot of men's and women's clothes have a little dart at the back, and you want this dart to resolve or end before their shoulder blade. So now I'm putting this little half of an inch dart in here, and I'm going to cut that out. Uh, uh, uh. I told you it would get fun, right? I haven't been crabby, have I? Have I been a little crabby? No. <laughs> crabby. I felt stern earlier, but I think it was just <laughs> my imagination. Mom, you're in your element. I'm in my element. I get fired up about this stuff. So now you can do, you you know how a vest kind of goes together, I imagine. Let's get rid of this piece we don't need. Well, we're going to keep this close. So now I have my front of my vest, my side front of my vest. I'm going to cut the dart out just so you can see it. In my back, I'm going to leave the dart. I'm not going to make a side back to my vest. And I'm going to have this beautiful little shoulder dart, which will make a really nice little, it makes a nice little bit of a curve. Oh, I'm too high. It makes a nice little bit of a curve for the back of my dude. Then, once you have, so when you're patterning, you can just totally go to town. So I've got my vest, right? If I want the back of the vest to be adjustable, if I want to add a belt in the back to make my vest accommodate more sizes, all I'm going to do is tape on some paper and make the back of my vest wider and figure out if I want to put a pleat at the neck or, or what I want to do um, to, so that I can add volume to the back of my vest, but that's that's a little that's not advanced. It just makes sense. Just play with it. Um, now, if I was making this lined, I would say um, 
My front facing can either be the same as my front piece, so I would have this as fashion, and then I would have it underneath as my facing. I'm going to have a fashion side front and a lining side front. I'm going to cut it the same. Then my back, if I want to gourmet it up a little bit, I can put something like this at the back neck. Lots of vests have a little fashion facing here. So in my outside of my vest, you could cut all with fashion or all with lining. Then if you wanted, you could put, so I'm going to give myself some little notches, you could put a extra fabric facing in the back of the neck. So that piece might look familiar to some folks too. Yeah. If they will have a shirt underneath, would you add ease all around? I would add just a smidge. And don't think of adding ease as something that you add on afterwards. Think of the ease, like you wouldn't need ease all around everywhere. You would just need a little bit of ease at the side and a little bit of ease at the back, but not a whole lot for a shirt. And always, whether you're using a pattern, a purchased pattern, or you've made your own pattern, always give yourself big side seams and a big center back seam because nine times out of ten, you can come up with your ease from that. Okay, I'm going to take a sip from our sponsor, Starbucks. Nobody's lurking in the window now, that's no. good. Okay, I'm going to look at the clock. We have a half an hour. So now I'm going to show you um, the next principle about pattern making, which is dealing with a dart. Whether you want to have a dart, Eliminate, eliminate a dart or turn a dart into fullness. Should I take that now? We got a question. Yeah, can you talk more about making the back center seam for the men that's flexible for more sizes? If you, if I wanted the back of this to accommodate more sizes, all I would do is take a piece of paper and I would tape a piece of paper onto my back, and I, and I know that this is my center back. This original line is my center back. If I wanted this to fit more dudes, I would just add more paper onto it so that I've got more to adjust. Then the kind of the rule is if I tell people or when I worked at Houston Valley and Joffrey, if something needed let out a, a, an inch and a half to two inches to fit somebody else, probably you need a new size. So if it's if your adjustment is more than two inches, you probably need another one for the next performer. Okay, so let's look at a girl's one that I've thrown here on the floor. Does anybody remember the quilt in the day lady that would throw everything? Anybody in America know who I'm talking about? No? I'm going to first show you dart manipulation. And this will be another light bulb uh, moment for many. I'm going to cut my one out that we didn't add a hip to. Because I'm going to show you the basics to, to dealing with the hip in a ballet style body here in a minute. Because I know that's what a bunch of folks want to see. Because I read your emails. About the back again. Um, I thought there were tricks to hiding some fabric in a pleat or something. Yeah, you just hide the fabric in a pleat. Like a ballet school of lots of sizes. Um, just a second. Hang on. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend that this woman's thing is a man's. Okay, I'm going to show you this. If I want to hide fullness in a pleat to accommodate more sizes, all I do is draw on extra fabric, which becomes a pleat, right? So here's my original center back. Way over here is my extra fullness. And if I want to hide that into a pleat, so we're pretending this woman's thing is a dude's thing. A dude tunic, a man tunic, a manic, a manic. This is a manic. Moonic, moonic, a man tunic. But if you're, uh, you would want to also put extra in the side, but you wouldn't want to pleat in the side. So 
if I wanted this to fit other guys, all I would do, if, if this is the first guy that fits my center back and I have the other side of my garment, all I'm going to do is sew my center backs together and now I have all this other fabric that I can let out. You would put it as a pleat uh, if it was a stylistic choice. Otherwise, you just need seam allowance back there. Because when you put a pleat at the center back, you're adding a whole lot of fullness. Now, oftentimes, I'll make a man's ballet costume where I, I put extra fabric in the back, and across his shoulders, I leave a box pleat, and I get rid of the box pleat from below their shoulder blades down. So you can also do something like this. So when the guy flexes, he's got a little bit hidden. Oh, I ripped it. He's got a little bit hidden back there to give him a little more room. If you wanted to fit multiple people but only have a short time between shows, would you do that differently? No. It doesn't take but a second to let out the center back or let out the sides. And it's one of those things where figure out how much times you have to let it in and out and maybe just make another one because it'll be the same amount of hassle. You know, use your time wisely. We're all valuable. At least our time is. Let's see. Okay, so now we're going to mess with dart moving. Dart moving, right? And I've got some samples that will stick on the dress form in a little bit. What I want to show you, actually, hand me that one that's right there. That one. Yeah. I cut my darts out. But what I want to show you is that a dart can happen anywhere on here. So if you close a dart, another dart will open bigger. So check this out. So this lays flat. If I close my waist dart, now my bust dart's bigger. I can get rid of the waist dart in my pattern have this giant bust dart and it will fit exactly the same. I can close my bust dart completely and have a gigantic waist dart. It will fit exactly the same. I can close my waist dart and have a big bust dart. It will fit the same. I can close my bust dart and enlarge my waist dart. It will fit exactly the same. Now, I'm going to show you on this one, if I want to make a princess seam, I'm going to just draw on my princess seam. Let's say I want to make a princess seam with a boat neck. I am going to just make my big old boat neck here. I'm going to chop off my neck. So I'm dealing with just the front because we're just, just showing you things to spark your imagination. If I want to make a princess seam, I just draw my princess seam on where I want it. Mark my notch. Then I don't want a princess seam with a bust dart. I'm going to close my a bust dart, cut this apart, and now I have a princess seam. <laughs> so the princess seam is really just a dart. Get it? Get it? Get it? So then I would say I'm going to make my front on the fold. I want my straight of brain. Uh, to be perpendicular from my waist because this is not a ballet bodice, it's just a dress. There you go. Let's look at more of that dart moving stuff and then we'll look at these on the dress board. I can close either dart, right? I can close both darts if I let the if I let a dart come somewhere else. And likely people have seen some period patterns that look like this. Anywhere you can slice in and open up a dart, as long as your paper lays flat, it's going to fit the same. Yeah. Do you have any tips for sewing those huge darts and not having pointy breasts? Practice. Um, if you're getting a pointy boob, it might mean that you need to move your dart up and up or down. And also, um, just you need to gradually move your stitching line off of the dart instead of like ramming right to the point. So if you're getting a pointy boob, put the thing on the person inside out and figure out like what shape at the end do you need. And sometimes the pointy boob comes from people back stitching too much in the, at the tip of the dart. And if you think of a dart, you have two things of bias. You have bias coming in two directions. If you over stitch that, you actually stretch a little bit of the fabric out and that might be what's making the point. 
But let's keep looking at this. I can slice a dart anywhere, and this will fit the same. I can slice a dart into the middle. A lot of Karinska bodices have a dart that's like that. So cool. No matter what I do, I can make this all fit the same. So everybody play with making a dart. And another thing that you can do is make a half scale pattern that you can Xerox over and over and cut out and, and continue to play with. Because um, uh, you can just sit in your chair at home and make all sorts of patterns through history using these basic ideas. Um, so let's put a couple more on the dress plate just to look at. Rachel made these fronts earlier. Um, so this was our dart and a dart. So we had a boob dart and a waist dart. Fits the same. Now if we have a princess scene, and this is just a front, but I'm going to put it on inside out. Is it easier to see inside out? Okay. So now my princess scene top will fit exactly the same as if we had had two darts. That shows mm -hmm. So princess scene fits the same. This is with the dart in the middle. It fits just the same. You can move that dart anywhere you want, or you can turn it into a seam. So, so anywhere you can close a dart, a dart needs to open, or you turn the dart into a seam. Does that kind of make sense? That's all. Of, that's that's the basics of making any uh, any top. Adding a dart, taking away a dart, adding fullness or taking away fullness. That kind of makes sense. That kind of makes sense. Okay, we're gonna now. Um, I'm gonna show you with the woman's one that we put a hip on. I'm gonna show you kind of how uh, you can deal with. Uh, we'll call this intro to ballet bodice one. Um, so let me get my one with the hip. Here's my one with the hip. I am going to, and I line the waist up. So now you'll see why it was like nice to line the waist up. Making a ballet bodice or a corset, right? If I wanted to make a corset, and I know that this fits my waist and this fits my bust, but I want to push up or bust, all I'm going to do is draft the nipple higher. If I move this side dart up and the the resolve of my waist dart, if I graph this higher up, it pushes the boob up because it can't go somewhere where there's not room for it. If I want to take in the waist, I can come in here and I can just say, oh, I'm going to take another half inch off the front, but angle it into that dart, right? I'm taking away the waist, but I want it to fit her high hip again, and I'm going to just angle that into the high hip. So. So you can control the shape of a garment, too, by addition and subtraction. You can take away uh, flesh from the human. So if I was making a corset, uh, you could even add another dart right here if you wanted. You can add a second dart and, and take away even more waist. So you would say, oh, she has a 32-inch waist. I want it to be 30. Divide that in half because we're only working with half of the body and figure out where you'd like to take that away. If you take away more in the front, pushes your boobs up more. If you take away a little bit right at the side seam, it gives her more hips. If you take away more at this back dart, it makes her butt a little bit curvier. You know, you're in control um, of what you're taking away. Let me turn this into a very basic ballet bodice now. So what do we know about a ballet bodice or any bodice? We know that we probably want to cover up our nipples, and we're going to say that for this one we want the back nice and low, and we want a few pretty seams that angle towards the middle. Generally, a big old vertical seam on anybody uh, makes them look wide and unattractive, so since we're imagining this is for a ballet or an opera, we want nice angle. So the first thing I'm going to plot in, like we did with our man's vest, is I'm going to kind of imagine where I want my neckline to be, and I'm going to, does the red show up at all? Mm -hmm. I'm going to just kind of pencil in tentatively my, 
my valley bodice neckline. I want my back to be super duper low and beautiful. I know where my side waist is. And I know I like bodices that come a little bit past their waist because I think it's prettier. And let's say I want the point of my bodice to go all the way down to her high hip. So I'm going to just kind of pencil loosely in those things before I get really into truing them up. So right now we've got these wonky darts. We're going to get rid of them here in a second. But I'm going to deal with my neckline and my uh, waist, my hem edge, my neck edge at the top and my hem edge at the bottom. First thing I'm going to do is close my dart, right? And I like stuff that's a little higher at the front of the person's leg instead of being the highest at the side seam. So I'm going to put the higher part of my curve at their leg and draw that in. My hem of my front is good to go. Now I'm gonna, I can cut this apart or I can just drag this over here. And just like we did on the man's vest, I'm gonna sew this together, right? I'm sewing the paper down. I'm imagining I'm sewing the paper down. Now I am going to make a, another beautiful curve that relates to my front curve. The curves should relate. Now I'm gonna fold my back dart together and put in the rest of my back. So the back of my bodice is going to be considerably lower than the waist. And it's going to fit. Now we can put in the front. The, the top is easy because there's no, this doesn't even run into a dart. Let's make it kind of long. She's modest. So this now, it's you're the designer. So I'm going to have my bodice come kind of close to her armhole and actually join up with her armhole. It's going to be a nice wide open neck. And I can just use my brain to figure out, oh, I've got this much flesh going on here and it covers her nipple. Important thing. Now we're going to do our back. So I know that my my armpits are there and there, and here it's running into the armpit. Now I'm going to just make a nice little back. And I close my dart because I want it, I want it to all connect when it's sewn. Someone's asking if this is a Russian bodice. Russian to me means that it's anchored at the hip. This isn't a Russian bodice. This is just a bodice. Um, now, what I'm going to do is make my pretty lines. So I'm going to make a big long line in the front, like this. So I'm going to go across her nipple with the seam because I know it's going to be attractive. Because um, I've made a lot of bodices and I look at a lot of bodices. So just take all your different curved rulers until you have something that you're in love with. And if your seam isn't even running into a dart. Your seam, we're calling it a style line or a seam. So I just, I, I'm not running into a dart at all, so I have nothing to clean up. This is good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put two single notches on that. Um, and I'm going to say it's got a nude inset. So I'm going to mark my nude inset in. So I, this is my center front of my nude. This is my center front bodice piece. This I'm going to cut on the fold, and this I might leave with the seam because it gives you something to adjust if you need to. Now, I want to have a side front, a middle front, and a front. So this is my front. I'm going to draft in a middle front and a side front. But I've got these yucky darts, so all I'm going to do is close my bust dart. And I'm going to just draw a line right over it. And if my line runs into the bottom of my waist dart, it's really easy to make it nice and clean it up. So I'm going to say that my side front is going to run into my waist dart like that. Again, this is, this is a little advanced, so I'm showing it to you and then you uh, will hopefully play with it and mess around. Um, let's see, so now if I've got two single notches here, then it's time for a double notch. 
because you want your notches to go less from the front and more to the back. So whoever is making this uh, knows exactly what to do. Now I'm going to just fold this side of my dart together and finish the seam. I know I drew that corset smidge on there, so I'm going to just finish my seam. So now I have a side front, a middle front, and a front. And we're going to go to the back, and I'm going to leave my back just like it is. So you can you can monkey with different style lines there too, but seeing the front is the most involved. So now I have a side back and a center back. And I'm nice, so I'm going to put three notches here so that there's no way for somebody to confuse my side back and my side front. And now I'm going to cut this out, and uh, I'm going to cut out my darts too so that it's a little clearer. And the more the more you play with this, the more it will it will start to feel comfortable and logical. And some folks, you know, I know people that have even gone to graduate school for patterning, they didn't have the epiphany. So if you just kind of welcome it in and don't overthink it is the best advice I've got. Because the folks that overthink it uh, really get mired down uh, and then they get frustrated with it. So I cut out my waist dart. I'm going to cut out my bust dart. Shunk, shunk, shunk. Don't get mired down. That's my advice. I'm going to tape my bust dart closed. And now I'm going to free this because I've got this seam going on here. And then I, I marked just a second ago this tiny little bit from my middle front that I want to give to my side front. So I'm going to just cut it off of my middle front. Give it to my side front. Voila. Now, check this out. This dart completely closes. And I now have a center front, or a front. Actually, my nude is my center front. And because I'm nice, too, I want to mark where this piece ends. So a little V is the nice way to mark that. And I have a center front, a front, a middle front, and a side front. Now, having made loads and loads and loads of bodices, uh, I discovered already that I like to make this space, I like to make it a little bit tighter at the top of the bust. You can see my bust. I like to make the top a little bit tighter. So all that means is that if you think of this as a dart, you want just a hair more dart. So this is one of those things that the more you play with it, you'll you'll get more comfortable with. So I'm going to put just a little tiny cut towards my nipple, and I'm going to take away just a smidge. And folks that did the Leotard 2 class, this will look familiar. I'm taking away just a little bit, like a quarter of an inch, at the top of my bodice. And what that's going to do is when this is sewn up, this is going to curve into her body just a little bit more, and it's going to be a little bit nicer. So now my grain for these, my front grain line, and you can do the front on the fold or with the seam. Remember, you're, you're the designer. So I'm going to say that's on the fold. Um, my straight of grain for my middle front is going to run parallel to the center of the dart that we got away, or got away, that we taped away. Now my side front can either have a grain line that's parallel to the waist, or if you want to make it on the bias, you're going to take the bias from the waist. A lot of people goof up and they, they use their side seam to figure out where their bias would be. It's not right because this is already an angle. We need to know something that's, that's horizontal or uh, vertical. So I'm going to put a 45 degree angle at my side front if you wanted to put the front on the bias. Do your retail patterns have that little extra cut out at the top to make it tighter to the breast? They do, but uh, it depends on the shape of the person. You might need to tighten that up. It just depends. And, then, and everything is assumed that you're going to have a fitting.
and hopefully. What's the advantage of a bias on this spot? Bias here gives her a little bit of room to take a breath, but it doesn't stay as fitted at the side. So that's one of those things that uh, you just will kind of have a preference for, whether it's something you want to do or not want to do. That just comes with time. Make a lot of make a lot of bodices, and then you'll start to know when you want to do that. It looks like you're cutting left-handed on my mirrored. I know we have a mirrored computer. It's weird. Okay, so now we're gonna throw all this away. Now you'll see too that I made the bias of my back. I took my front bias. 45 degrees from my waist. If I took the back bias from the waist too, it's going to be cockamamie and it's not going to run nice. I put my side front to my side back and drew on my bias so that it all matches up nicely. How do you decide where to put boning? Um, that's a different class. Take our bodice class in the future because uh, that's a completely different discussion. Because I want to show you some other stuff for patterning. So we've got a side back, side front, middle front, a front. I lost my back, but we all get what the back was. <laughs> Who knows? Let me show you some more stuff because we've only got six minutes. And then we'll take about five minutes of questions. I don't need them. Did you find it? Anyway. <laughs> it's hard to find anything. With hope. Enter in any questions that you have. Now I'm going to show you a couple pattern developments in miniature. And actually, um, let me show you this one first, and then we'll show you the two from when Rachel took the class. This is kind of a goofy shape, right? It's Edwardian, where they have this pigeon front. A lot of Edwardian ladies have yokes, and then they have uh, lace that fell from the front, and then they have these goofy pigeon bottoms to their blouses or an S curve. Some, some, it's, it is an S curve or a pigeon. Um, what it did was it, it made their waists look tinier by pooping out the front. But, you know, it's kind of an odd, odd choice. But let's look at the photo here, and then I'm going to just show you in miniature kind of what I did to get this basic shape. And we're doing sleeves another day. So I've, I've got this blouse that's fitted uh, across the shoulders, and you can't see under the, all the kerfuffle here, but she has a yoke, the top part of her blouse. And then the fullness is here in the center front. So in my little, if we look at my little miniature one, so this is all about opening a dart or closing a dart. Instead of this being fitted now, we've added more. So all I did was I looked at my, my reference picture, and I said, well, at her side, there's no fullness. So I started at my side here. And I said, I'm not going to add any fullness there. I want it to be flat. So if it's flat here and I haven't monkeyed with it, it's going to be flat on our girl. Then I could see that the front not only was gathered, but it dipped down. So if you look at my little one, here's my waist. But what I did was, from where I want the poofy, the pigeony part to start, I just marked a curve down below my waist so that when it's gathered, it poofs away from the waist. And this we'll look at more with sleeves. It's, it's like the rise or fall of the pattern. And if you just look at this closed up, you'll see that I had my waist dart here, right? It's just chunks of paper. What are we looking at? I had my waist dart. Oh, I'm showing it. I had my waist dart, which was here. Then I cut this up with a rotary cutter until I it fan it out and I added more fullness. So that's one of those things too to play with. Like what amount of fullness looks good? I don't know. I'm not your designer. Right? Um, let's look at her back. It was very simple. Uh, I drew my yoke on my back body block which had a dart in it and then I just want a little fullness at the back so I'm not closing the dart. I'm going to leave the fullness and I'm going to split the back. So that's addition where you're slicing and adding. And when you get the book, you'll see all sorts of slices. They call it slash and spread. Let's look at this other team meeting one here. Um, so I have my miniature block. Then 
we did a kind of a 40s look, which really isn't any different than the Edwardian one if you just break down. So I've got this girl, right? She's got something fitted around her waist and some fullness. Okay, so what I started with, oh, this is handy. This is my block that I drew on, just like I did with the bodice, right? I drew in, oh, I think her neck is there. Her neck is there. Well, I'm going to keep this dart because it's in the sketch. And then I gave myself a couple notches where I wanted to add the fullness. So I, I drew in my basic. So if you look at those two together, you'll kind of see why, where these lines are coming from in relationship to this. Like she's ready, she's ready to go out on the town. Or she's finished vacuuming. I'm not sure. Um, now I'm going to lay my pieces out. So here's my front. I have the front of my belt and the side front of my belt. Then this is this part fitting here. That kind of shows, right? Mm -hmm. So here I don't have fullness. You'll see that she's got fullness coming just up from her bust, those gathers in there. So all I did was cut into my pattern and open it up wherever I wanted to see a gather. And I gave myself little notches so that I know where everything goes back to. So we're not going to look at the back. We're going to look at the front. So if you look at this, you'll, you'll mess with this and think about this stuff. But you can see how I kind of turned this shape into these shapes, which then turned into I'm going to show you this one and then the other two little ones and then take about five minutes of question. It's a lot. All right, no. Um, I'm not going to take the time to pin all this in. But you can see, I don't have her arm hole lined up. Anyway, you can see that under her bust are my gathers and here's the seams for my belt. So I just used uh, what I know about adding and subtracting fullness and playing with it, and I was able to add those shapes in to start kind of a 40s top. Same thing, I'm going to go just over to that side of the table. Rachel did these two in patterning class. This is a Christian Dior dress. So she took her same body block and she added a little collar to it and she drafted the sleeve further out. She added an overlap for the front and the back and she just kept her darts the same. Oh, she's drunk. She kept her darts the same because they are in the fashion illustration and in the historical photos. So looking in old books and getting lots of costume history books and fashion history books, you can see a lot of how this um, uh, starts to work together. And what's funny is the exact same pattern and block for this Dior dress is what she used to make this house of worth Victorian dress. She's got little darts here. She left a little of her dart and moved it sideways. Then she's got fullness at the neck. So she actually split her shoulder and opened the shoulder up. And then she retraced her same block and made a little gathered insert. So this little dicky that's inside here is actually hooked into the shoulders into the waist. So she made an understructure with gathers on it and then made her over jacket and she actually removed her back darts at the side seam. That amount of back dart she just grafted over to here. And then the sleeve stuff we'll play with later. And anybody taking the skirts tomorrow, um, we're going to look at this kind of stuff like how some of the basics of a gourd skirt and a circle skirt and a tulip skirt. And there's still time to sign up. There's still time to sign up. So anybody that signed up for skirts, I'm actually, we weren't going to, but so many people are taking the patterning class, this patterning class. I'm going to send you the couple of pages on drafting a skirt block, and we're going to look at messing with a skirt block to make these different shapes and other ways to make different shapes. Huh? That was fun. Question time. They've got five minutes. Can you recommend other flat patterning books? Yeah, start with this. This is the best one to get good at and get familiar with. Then get the Helen Joseph Armstrong flat patterning book. Then get the Helen Joseph Armstrong 
draping book. Why flat patterning? Because when you drape stuff, um, well, I like a marriage of both. I find the best drapers are people that understand how to get shapes flat first. And the other advantage is flat patterning comes from measurements. Oftentimes people are trying to drape something for a woman with lower breasts, different hips, different neck, different shoulders on a dress form. Then they spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to make it fit their client. Um, so you can combine draping and flat patterning and you'll be a more successful draper if you understand what the shapes look like, how do you get the shape first with math. But you can flat pattern something, then take it on the dress form and drape something over it or, or use a combination. Any other questions? We have time for one more question. Another good set of books to get is called Pattern Magic. There's three little books uh, and, I, and they're from the Far East and they've been translated now into English and they show all this similar kind of stuff. And get this book for sure so they don't come after us. Any other questions? Look like it. Doesn't look like it. Well, thank you, and we will see some of you tomorrow. And patterning two is a week from now. Yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, I hope so. I'll and if you here. haven't signed up for that, you can still do that. Yeah, and I think a couple folks might have thought they're signed up for two and three. So just check if you're doing two and three. Make sure you've done the step two for for patterning two and patterning three. Uh, I think a few people have paid for two and three, but only did step one in the thing. That one. <laughs> We're good. No more questions. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. I'm sure it's locked off.